Um, we messed up here last time. Yes, we did. Okay. Um, I think I'll just try looking at this again. Nothing big. Okay. She was around. Nobody. Let's have a little fun with a snowball. Where does this go? Oh, skating pond. Much better. I was really cold. Really cold, I guess. So who else can I call? Nah, I don't wanna call that guy. Wonder who's downstairs. Oh. 
How can I help you? Aww. I've disturbed you long enough. Kavichi Naya. Sana. I'm just going to stand here and absorb the warmth. Okay, Nancy. What you need? Nothing. I'll get out of your hair now. If you need anything, just holler. No, I don't really need anything from you. Not just boring. I think I'll go and sleep off the cold. Stand by Fanta and try to top people up. Let's see. No one censoring. Sleep till noon. Wait, what? What's the weather? Oh, I think it was still in danger. Let's see, 11, probably. Sleeping. Still in danger, huh? What's up? What do you think about all the weird things that have been happening around here? I think they're kind of cool. Accidents make life colorful, you know? You wouldn't be saying that if you were the one who'd slipped on those ice-covered stairs, or eaten that bad potato salad, or had those four flat tires. Hey, I had that broken window. Broken window? I went snowshoeing on, like, the third day I was here, and when I got back, the window in my room was broken. Glass was all over the place. Was anything missing from your room? Nah, it wasn't a burglary. It was like the window just decided to break. I mean, there was no rock on the floor, no bullet, no nothing. It was the wolf. Tried to jump up into your room, but didn't quite make it. 
that's bogus, dude. My room's on the second floor, and besides, wolves don't do stuff like that. Hey, that wolf does a lot of stuff wolves aren't supposed to do. That's why it needs to be hunted down. Oh. It's just doing its thing, man. Get off its case. Anyway, my window broke and nobody knows why. Pretty awesome, huh? You're right. Do you ever see anyone else when you're out there snowshoeing? I see that Yanni guy sometimes. I'll be plodding along and he'll go zooming by. Those skis of his are like rockets, man. He's all like zippy zoom. Do you ever hear explosions? Yeah, and they freak me out. It doesn't take a very big sound to trigger an avalanche. And when you're out there by yourself, nothing will ruin your day faster than a couple of tons of snow roaring your way at a hundred miles an hour. Tell me about it. So you go to school in California? Yep. University of California at Brea. Hmm. What kind of degree are you working on? Master of Fine Arts. Cool. So what's your favorite medium? What is this, like the Spanish Inquisition? Hey, give her a break. She's just trying to make pleasant conversation. Oh, right. Um, my favorite medium? Dirt. I'm sorry, I don't think I heard you correctly. I create works of art by manipulating naturally occurring geophysical substances like dirt. Sometimes I just use my hands, but most of the time heavy machinery is involved. Oh, brother. Nobody understands my art, but that's cool. To be great is to be misunderstood. FYI, Ralph Waldo Emerson said that. Is this your first time at the lodge? Yep. My car broke down on my way to Lake Louise last summer. Pulled in here to wait for the tow truck and figured it'd be a cool place to visit during the winter, so here I am. So, you like to snowshoe? I like doing stuff outside. Snowshoeing's about all I can afford. Is it a hard sport to learn? You don't learn how to snowshoe. If you need to get through snow that's too deep to walk through, you slap on some snowshoes and you just do it. Nice talking to you. Been real. Hey, excellent job on the snow shoveling, eh? We had ourselves one fine time out there because of you, especially Lou here. I beat him five times. By the slimmest of margins. Which is why now he's too chicken to go mano a mano with me out there in the ice fishing shack. Snowshoeing's my thing, dude. Besides, it's animal cruelty. Give me a break. You ever been ice fishing? No, but I've always wanted to try it. Excellent. Here's the deal. I need some competition, so I want you to go out there and try to catch a bigger fish than I caught yesterday, which means you gotta catch a two-foot northern pike. Now, it's a bit of a hike out to the lake, but the shack is solar heated, so it's nice and warm inside. So what do you say, kiddo? You game? Anything to make you guests happy. Atta girl. Is this the first time you've been to the lodge? Yep, sure is. Are you by any chance related to Rolf Kessler, the guy who used to build carousels around the turn of the last century? No idea. Well, I'll let you get back to beating Lou. See you later. I'm glad you stopped by. The alarm clock is missing from my room. I don't necessarily need another one. I just don't want to be charged for that one. Seeing as I have no idea where it went to. I'll make a note of it. You're a doll. Now, did you want to ask me something? Well, I'd better stop bugging you and get to work. Au revoir. Oh, damn it. Still on danger.
Hey, Ned. Everything all right? Bad news. Chantal is insisting that if I need help, I get it from this police consultant she hired. A guy named Tino Balducci. Tino Balducci? Not that cop. That's the one. How does Chantal know him? All I know is she thinks he's charming, and for this case I have to get all my hints from him. Well, I'm sure he'll be very helpful. Not as helpful as, say, I would have been, of course, but very helpful. Guadalupe Comillo says she's a bird watcher, but I'm not so sure. Why do you say that? For one thing, most birders will go on for hours about the birds they've seen or the birds they want to see, but not her. In fact, birds seem to be the last thing on her mind. And for another thing? The alarm clock from her room is missing. So, she's not a bird watcher because she sleeps in? I found a melted clock face in the debris left behind when the bunkhouse exploded. It could have been part of the timing device. You think it could have been Guadalupe's? You think she's the one who blew up the bunkhouse? Hey, women can blow things up too, you know. At the very least, they can help blow things up. Whatever you say. I'd better get going. I miss you, you know. I miss you too. Bye, Ned. Mm, Chantal. Chantal. Nancy! Listen, before I forget, Ollie called and said that one of the guests, uh, that Bill guy... Bill Kessler. Kessler, right. Apparently he's been agitating for someone to compete against him in some kind of ice fishing contest. I know. He asked me and I said I would. Good, because as I said before, you and Ollie are to keep what few guests we have at the lodge happy. They want you to go ice fishing, I want you to go ice fishing. So, what else is going on? You'll hear from me again later. Good. Talk to you soon. Sheesh. Mm -hmm. Keep walking. This is Nancy Drew again. Can't talk now. Sorry. No. 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 Ah. Fine. What about the sheriff? Sheriff's office. This is Mohican. Hi. This is Nancy Drew again. Let you get back to Oh, work. we don't have Goodbye. anything to support him. Fine. Cold.
I'm staying out of there until I have to fix a meal. No need to go in there till it's time to cook. What is that time to cook? Fancy doesn't like cooking. I don't blame her. I got one, two, three. Go annoy some people. I I don't need to leave a message. You've reached the happy home of Brenda and Derek Southway. Unhappily, we're not at home right now. In fact, we won't be back for a couple of weeks, so why don't you just call back then? In the meantime, we set the alarm, so if you're calling because you're thinking about burglarizing us, think again. 
Okay, let's see if I can go try the ice fishing without getting hypothermia. Because it's hard to get the good weather in this game. Well, save the game. Okay, we'll save the game right here. So if we get hyperthermia, it is cool weather, we can just backtrack and wait for good weather. If I don't get warm soon, I may not make it. Oh my gosh, it looks like someone came in here and just wrecked everything. Including the fishing gear. <sighs> so much for catching a two foot northern pike. I can't fish without a hook and line. Hmm. Left behind by whoever trashed this place, maybe? 202-555-7237. That's a US phone number. Yep. Can I write that down? Yep, we can have that. <sighs> I'm starting to get really cold. Quickly, quickly. Ah, warm again. Somebody left me a note. Someone went into the ice fishing shack and ruined all of Bill Kessler's equipment. Probably some animal loving eco fanatic who figured it was time to save the fish. You don't by any chance have a hook and line I could borrow, do you? Say no more. There's my tackle box. It's all yours. Kessler tried to rope me into competing with him, but I can't very well do that when you've got my hook and line now, can I? No, I don't suppose you can. What else do you want? I'll get out of your hair now. Good. Okay, what do we do? 
should call the phone number first. Two zero two five 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 seven two three seven. Was that seven two three seven? Oh, shoot. Two. See what Ned thinks about this. Hi, Ned. Hey, Ned. Everything all right? It was oh, great talking nothing. to you. You can call me anytime. Got that? Got it. Bye. Okay guys, I'll save this right here and then I'll see you in the next video.